We're here to give you budget alternatives for some of Commander's most expensive staples. I'm Mia, and I like walking around Walmart really late at night. I'm BZ. I like mini M&Ms better than regular M&Ms. We're the Nitpicking Nerds, sponsored by Card Kingdom. You know, they're like the mini M&Ms of sponsors. Pretty much the best thing you can get. Because you can do everything there. Buy, sell, check out our page soon. You, you can pre-order. They have all the products you'll ever need. Supplies too. Go check them out. We love them so much. Definitely a lot better than using a thousand, you know, purchases of four cards. Just get all the cards on the same site. Save a million dollars on shipping. That is the correct estimated cost saved. A million dollars. Uh, also sponsored by Dragon Shield. Probably because they have the best sleeves in the multiverse. Good sleeves. And you can actually save 5% when you try to buy sleeves if you use code NERDS at checkout. That's very simple stuff. And Moxfield's in the video as a sponsor somewhere, but you don't know where. So we got some budget replacements that serve a similar function as a lot of the most expensive, like $30 plus dollar staples that you're going to see in Commander. So for each card, we're going to kind of look at the, the staple itself and say, like, why is it good? What can we replicate from this card? How can we get similar effects for like a tenth of the price? I think in Commander, there are a lot of net decks and lists where a lot of these cards end up because they are very good at what they do. However, we don't always have the money to buy six copies of this card. So if you have more budget alternatives, it's going to be a little bit better. Plus, it's going to make your decks a little bit more unique than the average deck you find online. Exactly. So let's just get into the first one. One of the most repeat offenders for like expensive staples that I, you know, try not to buy at Rhystic Study. It's like $50 right now as Commander gets more and more popular. The stonks for this thing just keep going up. It's two and a blue for an enchantment. Whenever an opponent casts a spell, you draw a card unless they pay one. It's one of the best card drawing spells of all time in Commander. It sits on the board and if someone doesn't answer it, that person is way more likely to win just due to the advantage that the card brings. Yeah, you play it, you pay the mana value, and then it generates consistent advantage without you having to do anything. You just set it and forget it and now your opponents are going to be forced to like note that this exists and play around it and figure some stuff out so let's see what we can do on a budget our first one is ghostly pilfer it's 50 cents and it um when it becomes untapped you can pay two and draw a card whenever an opponent casts a spell from anywhere other than their hand you draw a card and then you can discard a card to make it unblockable this turn so the discarding kind of fuels the like first ability where you can untap it to draw a card um mostly though what we're getting is the second ability, where whenever an opponent casts uh, their commander, or a card from exile, or a card with flashback from their graveyard or whatever, we get to draw a card, and we don't have to pay anything into this. I think it triggers a lot more than people would realize, because even if they have their commanders out, there are a lot more of those flashback rebound, you know, casting from exile, like with Prosper effects, that we utilize to get advantage in commander, that I think this will trigger a lot more than people think. Yeah, and we're paying, what is this, 100 one one hundredth of the price? It is, is that what that is? <laughs> it is a lot less, and it's great to see because we do love building budget decks, but also it's really hard to justify buying a copy of Ristic Study for every deck that needs blue. I don't even think a deck with Ristic Study in it can be considered budget <laughs> because that's already <laughs> more than I've spent on a budget deck. $50 is ridiculous. Uh, okay, the next card is Insight. This is an enchantment for three. It says whenever an opponent casts a green spell, you draw a card. So this is a $1 card that I have never heard of in my entire life before doing research for this video and i think in certain metas this could kind of slap there's a lot of like mana dorks that'll come down really cheaply where you can draw a bunch of cards in a single turn a lot of the decks that just share multiple colors you might be able to get a lot of cards out of this in every turnaround considering that you know there are those multi-pip spells that you can grab the little guys that come down you know i think that in general you're gonna get a fair amount of cards with this and it's a lot less threatening on the board than Ristic Study, so it might be less susceptible to spot removal. Yeah, I mean, this confirms that our Ghostly Pilfer is 1 100th of the price, because this is 1 50th of the price, 2% of the price, and you can actually, it, it is an enchantment. So it's like that same level of difficult to remove, it sticks out, it's the same exact mana value, you just don't draw a card whenever they cast any spell, but the upside of, I guess, Ghostly Pilfer and Insight is that the card draw is not optional. Whenever they do this thing, whenever they cast something from like their command zone or whenever they cast a green spell, you just get a card. There's no way for them to stop you. Yeah. Sometimes with Ristic Study, you're like, I really hope I draw cards off of it, but they're just going to go pay one, pay one, pay one, and then you kind of feel sad. This is kind of guaranteed card draw just, you know, off of slightly more specific spells. Even though it is a little bit more specific, I really do like this. I want to try it in more decks 
especially if I do know the meta, because there are a lot of decks like your Svela deck where a lot of things come down very quickly. Even though this is cast, if you're playing against someone who gets down a lot of Mandorx really quickly and can rebuild the board or has to do with a lot of like bouncing stuff back to their hand, like in Simic, for instance, you might be able to get a lot of triggers off this. Yeah, next up, we're going to crank up the budget just a little bit, and we're going to pay $7 for Mystic Remora. This is, now when they cast non-creatures, they have to pay four mana or you draw. It has Cumulant of Upkeep. Realistically, no one's ever going to pay for this. This one is like impossible. You know, people say, do you pay the one? Because it's a real question. Do you pay the four? No one's going to do that. That's like half my turn or all my turn. So you're going to get a lot more cards off of this, but it's fleeting. You can't pay. No one's really going to pay cumulative upkeep like four for their Mystic Remora. So it'll stay out for like one, two or three turns. You get your cards off of it and then it's gone. So it kind of removes itself. People tend to play around this very, very specifically considering that in the beginning of the game, if you play this turn one, they're not going to drop their soul rings. They're not going to drop their arcane signets. Or if they do, you're going to profit off it and the rest of the table will not be happy with them. That's exactly true. So Mystic Remora, definitely the best of these substitutes. Clearly, they're, they're played alongside Rhystic City all the time. So this is the best substitute, but we had to mention it. It is a little pricey at seven. The next one is also a little pricey at seven, but it's a creature. It's Nezahal, Primal Tide. Their non-creatures draw you cards, and you can discard three cards to basically protect this for a turn. Um, this is another thing that you can just sort of set down. It requires zero mana investment. Honestly, when I was talking about what Rhystic City was doing, you know, coming down for a zero mana investment, the one that violates that little thing is Mystic Remora, <laughs> which is the best one. But still, yeah, this you don't have to pay any extra mana into it. It just draws you cards whenever things happen. And you can help, like, dominate the game, get your cards, and it's not optional. I really like Nezahal. I have it in my card drawing base deck. I think it's super cool, the fact that you can flicker it, and it's just damage on the board or a blocker. It's chunky. It's like a 7-7. Seven, seven. Mm -hmm. Next is a staple in every red deck, or at least it seems like every red deck online. It's Dockside Extortionist. $90 right now. When a red, it comes down and you make a treasure for each artifact or enchantment your opponents control. And if they have a lot of treasures or something, that's going to add up. Yeah, this is the best mana positive ritual, whatever you want to call it, in the entire format. It's probably the number one best red card in the format. Maybe Jessica's will, but this is, I would say this is better. It's $90. So like just absolutely ridiculous uh, price tag on this card. So we're going to try to replicate it. It is strong because it is like mana positive. The turn you cast it, um, it generates treasures and it like creates a lot of permanence also, artifact permanence. So we're going to see what we can get out of that. The first budget replacement we have is Brass's Bounty at $1. It's seven mana sorcery. So not exactly two mana, but you make a treasure for each land you control. So it is a scalable a one-shot burst of treasures based on, you know, how long the game has progressed. I like this because it depends on you. There's a lot of times where Dockside will come down and your opponents will have treasures or something and they'll sacrifice them in response so you don't get the treasures from it. But this is really nice because it depends on the amount of lands you have and people really can't do anything to respond to that. Yeah, it's choose your own destiny. You, you decide how good this card is. And it is not really castable for the first, like, four turns of the game, but once you play it, you can, like, Keep those treasures until the next turn, and then you have, like, double mana. Kind of like a weird, say, pseudo time walk. But yeah, Brass's Bounty, obviously it's not as good, but it is $89 cheaper and does do something similar. It is one shot, here's a bunch of treasures. We also have Mana Geyser, which is not treasures, but it's $3, and it makes a red mana for each tapped land your opponents control. This is typically way more mana than you're going to get from Dockside, but it's obviously the five mana instead of two. And you only can use it right now. It's like use it or lose it. Especially if you get one opponent who's been ramping all game. They've been throwing big haymakers left and right. And then it's like, oh, you have 15 lands tapped right now? Well, I'm going to love that because I'm going to throw out something super awesome. Yeah, usually I think Mana Geyser feels like you're getting about 15 mana minimum, like 5-5-5 five, five, and five from your opponent. That is not unreasonable. And you, like you said, it could be 15 from one person and then 10 and 10. And so you just get like 30 mana. This is good for when you want to fire off giant X spells or just ridiculous haymakers. Take a really long turn. Um, you can loop Dockside with like flickering and stuff. But that's also kind of true of Mana Geyser. If you copy it or you recur it, you can actually go infinite with like a reiterate in a Mana Geyser. So that's kind of got some of the same like combo potential. And it is a bajillion mana. I'd really rather have this in my decks than Dockside at times, because if you care about number of sorceries too, it can really matter. I love this with like Crackle of Power, I think that's really juicy. Yeah. Or if you're playing Rakdos, you could have this with Torment of Hailfire too. And that's just gonna be game over. Yeah, we'll move on to the next one. It's Cavern Horde Dragon at $13. It's a little pricier, but again, nowhere even approaching $90. Uh, this is a 9-mana 6-6 six, six that costs 
less based on the number of artifacts an opponent controls. And then it's got flying trample haste. When it hits somebody, you get a treasure for each artifact they control. So this is actually pretty similar in that it cares about how many artifacts your opponents have. And the more artifacts they have, the better this is and the more treasures you get. And it could even cost two mana. If they've got seven artifacts, which is not... The, it's not impossible. I've seen people with seven artifacts, especially if it's treasure or food or artifact lands or something. That means that this costs red red. And if you're just going to smack somebody uh, and it survives, that's also repeatable. So we're now at a point where like, hey, on certain board states, this could even be better than Dockside. It's not a better card in a vacuum. But on a budget, I think this is probably the closest one for one you could make you're gonna have to aim it at the right opponent of course but it does come with haste evasion and trample so even if they have just like a one one thopter which a lot of the artifact decks often do you're still going to be able to get in for a bunch of damage and get the mana back that you probably spent to cast it our last budget replacement for dockside was actually the inspiration for this entire video i was like oh Jessica's Will is really expensive. It's like 30 bucks. Let's make a video about, you know, budget alternatives. Let's go back to that. But it's actually only $15 now because it got reprinted. So I guess it's going to serve as a, a budget option instead of a card to actually replace. This is going to make a bunch of mana based on someone's hand size. And it does also draw you cards. Basically, it's just a mana positive thing that is very good that I would recommend playing. Certainly, I would buy five Jessica's Wills before I bought one Dockside. And you still have money to spare. Just because Will is really great. It's three mana and it does a little bit of everything. It helps you with card advantage and it helps you with mana. But just remember that it does target a player. So if they have Hexproof or something or they can cast something that gives them Hexproof at instant speed, you won't be able to get that effect. Yeah, but it is a huge burst of red mana and it gives you more than what you put in, but only for the turn. Next is a card that I think you are not going to expect on this list. It's Jeweled Lotus. It's $120. What? That's a lot of money. But I think we've got four cards here that are actually pretty good budget replacements. So what Jewel Lotus does is it comes down for extremely cheap. Actually as cheap as a spell can be, which is zero. And it puts you ahead on mana and a little temporary boost. So we're going to try to replicate that. The thing that I really want to copy off Jewel Lotus is the cheapness of it. I don't want to just say, cut Jewel Lotus for Arcane Signet because they both make mana. It's like, yeah, but that's not why... Jewel Lotus is so good, and that's not an honest thing to do, is to just say play Arcane Signet instead of Jewel Lotus. We've got some cheaper options. The first one is Springleaf Drum. This is 80 cents, and this is the only mana rock, as far as I can tell, besides Soul Ring, that is one mana. And it's one mana, and you can tap it right away for one mana. So as long as your deck has a lot of creatures, I think this is actually really good, and it'll help accelerate you on the early turns into bigger plays. This is also just to point out the worst, you know, this is the least close to Jewel Lotus that we have so far. This was reprinted recently in the Brothers War, which is what's making it so cheap. I know BZ recently bought a ton because he's been putting it in a lot more decks recently. I think it's a budget staple at this point. I pretty much play it in every deck I can. As long as you have creatures, you're good to go. It's going to accelerate you. It's going to be like mana neutral the turn you play it. Um, the rest of these are not uh, going to be permanents that stay in play. They're all going to go away. Let's start with Lotus Bloom. It's $1.60. It's got Suspend 3, so you can't cast it. It has no mana value. You Suspend 3 for 0. Three turns later, you get Black Lotus. So you're getting a better card, but you have to wait three turns. That's a lot. It is a lot of turns to wait, but it will give you that mana boost. You just can't do it on turn 1 or 2, you know, turn 4 or 5 maybe. Then you can play like 8 mana worth of things. There are also more suspense synergies now that Doctor Who came out. So it is possible that if you have enough mana, you could get this pretty quickly. Yeah, and there are some cards that say, oh, you know, cast a, a spell from your hand for free. That lets you just put this out. Or it is an artifact. So you can just reanimate it from the graveyard somehow with, with certain things. There's a lot to play around with this card. It can definitely work in some decks. But I think if you really want that mana burst, save... $119 and wait three extra turns. It's, it's it's a little bit slow, totally, but it is that mana boost. Couldn't you also play this in Cascade because that's where you're playing like the mm -hmm. inevitable betrayals and, yep. and the profane tutors so that you can just negate that entire suspend clause to begin with? Yeah, if your deck can do that, I think this is a definitely a good replacement for Jeweled Lotus. Uh, the next one, you probably haven't even heard of this one. It's Jeweled Amulet. $2.30. It's zero mana. You can pay one and tap it to put a counter on it and you know the type of mana, and who cares? And then you pay, and you tap it and remove the counter from it to add the mana of whatever type you made to put the counter on it. Um, this is a zero mana rock 
that you can play early. So we play it on turn one. Then we use our one land to charge this up. And now on turn two, we can cast a three drop because we go up on mana. It's like, it's like a weird piece of fast mana, but you have to like put a mana into it to get a mana out of it. I still think it's actually good to accelerate from if you're one of those decks that want to just have a really ridiculous turn five and you want to play like seven mana worth of things or you've got some kind of you know ridiculous card draw commander that you need to get out as soon as possible this helps with that this is like a little bank where you're storing your mana early to take it out later this might also be interesting if you have proliferation strategies considering that it says that you can only put charge counters on with the one and tap ability if there's already no counters on it but if you can put counters on other ways, then you don't even have to pay into that. Yeah, and it's a, it's one of those rocks, like the rest of these on the list, that come down before Arcane Signal. They can come down before that, so you feel like you're actually doing things with your early game that other people can't do, and you're accelerating past that. Because you can do any four of these cards, you know, suspend them or play them, and then play Arcane Signal on turn two. And then, turn three or four, you're going to go off to the races. And I think that's pretty important. That's a pretty important aspect of Jewel Lotus. Plus not being constrained by just only being able to cast your commander with that mana is a nice upside. Yeah. Uh, lastly, we have Lotus Petal. It's $19. Honestly, that's what, one sixth of the price. And it just is one third of Jewel Lotus, but you can sacrifice it uh, and you can cast any spell with it. I think Lotus Petal is great. I think if your commander draws cards at all, Lotus Petal should probably be in your deck, like from a power perspective. It's close to fast mana it's really close if not just is plus if you can cast stuff from your graveyard you can just have it for free i know that's why bz loves having the baubles and then just this in the faster decks yeah this is great if you have a three mana commander this is one of those things that helps you get it out on turn two especially if you're not green that's pretty hard to do you know if you've got like a three drop blue commander lotus petal here you go this works with any commander that draws you a card or makes you the monarch or whatever you need to play this card especially if you're going for that power spike you know when you start playing things like jewel lotus lotus petal should probably also be in your deck it's also a tiny bit lower in price right now because it was a promo like pretty recently yeah it was like a uh, convention promo so let's go to our next card what do we got it is demonic tutor 40 dollars right now that is way higher than i'd like to pay for it one in a black and you search your library for a card and you put it into your hand and then shuffle it's one of the best tutors because it goes straight to your hand and not the top of your library like a lot of other tutors do yeah it's ridiculous the mana investment just two mana for your best card in any situation is like unmatched but what this does is it grabs your best card for any scenario unrestricted and it puts it in your hand so it lets you you know recover from being behind by getting a board wipe push the advantage when you're ahead find you a bolus of citadel or an ad nauseum or whatever when you're looking for card advantage so demonic tutor we're going to try to see if we can for a reasonable price get the best card in our deck you know in our hand uh, the first one we have is hoarding broodlord dollar fifty it's eight mana but it's a creature and it's a seven six and it has convoke so you can cast this for pretty cheap if you use your creatures to throw out the mana for it and when it enters you tutor it goes to exile and the tutor spell actually also has convoke so kind of a couple upsides here like we can mix and match how we want to pay it and the card's protected from our hand it's not in our hand and the card is cheaper to cast basically because that's convoke the exile part is really nice there's been times where people have forced me to wheel with like a windfall but that card is still safe because it's an exile the convoke is not bad i haven't really been able to use it in the decks that i run hoarding broodlord but I do like having the option if I do have a lot of like little like tokens out for some reason. Yeah, Hoarding Broodlord, I think, is so much better than Runescar Demon. I'm not going to put Runescar Demon on this list. Even if I had three more slots, it still wouldn't be on here. But I think Hoarding Broodlord is amazing. It's actually castable. You can get it down for like four mana reasonably. And four mana for a tutor is a lot, but we get bonuses. It's not just Diabolic Tutor, which is also not on this list. It's also a bad card. You, you pay about, you know, four mana, you get a 7-6 flyer, and the card's protected, and it has Convoke itself, so it can potentially be cast right away when a normal tutor couldn't do that for you. Hoarding Broodlord, definitely a card to consider. It's, it gives you a lot of options, and I wish more people would be playing with it. I love this card. Yeah, what do we got next? Next is Beseech the Queen at $3.60. You can either pay six or black, black, black. Two mana for every black mana that you don't pay. You search your library for a card with a mana value less than or equal to the number of lands you control, reveal it, put it into your hand, and then shuffle. Unfortunately, you don't get the option of keeping it secret like Demonic Tutor does, but you can just get it for three black mana if you are in like mono black or you can get three black easily. Right, yeah, three black for a tutor is not bad. Um, once you get past 
seven lands. This is just a three mana tutor. It has it, there's no restriction because I don't have cards that cost twelve in my deck. I'm not gonna go find those. This is really really close. During the early turns of the game, you might be searching for you know a wrath or mana production to to further your game plan, and that's actually still just makes this card castable on turn three or four. I can go get damnation or toxic deluge or mana crypt or whatever I'm trying to get just on turn three, and that's pretty much the same thing as the mana tutor. And then later. I'm getting any card in my deck because I know I have eight lands out. Three is not bad considering it is, you can get some spicy pull from an off agent, for instance. Your soul ring. Even, yeah, even if you just fire it off on turn three, you're saying. Yeah, yeah. You can, and you can fire it off even sooner if you do have, like, the rocks we were talking about earlier. Next up is Dark Petition. It's a five mana sorcery. You search for a card, put it into your hand, then shovel. That rate is very, very bad. But if you have Spell Mastery, you get to add three black mana right away, which now puts you at exactly demonic tutor rates. It even maybe has a little bit of an upside because you're getting three black out of it, but you only put two black into it. So it could, in some scenarios, color fix you a little bit. And it's only $4. This card's amazing. It's not hard to get those instants and sorceries into your graveyard by the time you have five black mana to spend. You have a kill spell here, or you can have the ability to mill, because you are in black. Mm -hmm. So I think it is very reasonable to say that you're getting a tutor for two black mana. Yeah, last one is Diabolic Intent at $10. Now this is the same mana value and the same effect, but the only extra little wrinkle is you have to sacrifice a creature. So this, in some cases is just better than Demonic Tutor. There's a lot of times that I have, you know, you have both in a deck, obviously, but you cast Eyeball Content and you're like, yeah, I wanted to sacrifice a creature. I wanted the dice trigger. Thanks. There's also other ways to get creatures, like if someone generous gifts your enchantment, you already have that creature lying around. You go, oh, well, I might as well use it for utility anyways. Yeah, sorry, little elephant. You're about to go find me my bolus of Citadel. <laughs> And I know we were doing four cards for each of these, but I did have a fifth suggestion for swapping out Demonic Tutor. You can go to moxfield.com, log on, follow the Nipping Nerds account, and that unlocks a super secret version of the website that you've never seen before. One that lets you create and edit your decks. I do love Moxfield, especially when I'm tutoring, actually, because if you see me on my phone during a game, it's usually because I have a tutor in hand. I'm trying to see the best targets for it. Moxfield is really great for that because you can search by mana value or type of like card that you're able to look for, or just in general, just see what you have. Just the ability to pull out my phone instead of having everybody wait for me. You know, I can pull out my phone during someone else's turn, scroll real quick, see the cards in my deck go, oh yeah, I'll go get this thing next turn. It actually saves a lot of time. And we're going to go to Parallel Lives, the next really expensive card. $30 despite the reprint. Yikers, this is a token doubler. So if you would make one or more tokens, instead you make twice that many. That is a pretty powerful effect. This is a card that token decks love. What it usually does is either double the amount of stupid useless tokens you have to eventually make it into a useful amount of a lot of dummies or copy like really important tokens and give you a second one when that's sort of hard to do there can be a lot of etv triggers that you're looking for or you're just looking for a bunch of treasures and parallel lives is great for that but we do have some budget alternatives one of them is peregrine took at 60 cents tuna green for a two three if one or more tokens would be created under your control those tokens plus an additional food are created instead and you can draw a card if you sack three foods which you're going to be able to sacrifice because you will have those tokens yeah this is uh it might look like a food card but it's actually just a token card in general if you want a critical mass of just stuff a lot of token decks do this just poops out tokens you know you make one token here one token here there's a trigger make a token a token on your turn token on your turn that's like five foods you know every one of those individual triggers for tokens one or more tokens gives you foods and then you can start cashing them in for cards or just use the fact that they're a token for some other strategy it's got that same vibe to it and uh did you know that it's less expensive? <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of things are less expensive than Parallel Lives, but I really do like the fact that it does have the stapled on effect of drawing cards, and then you're going to be using these food to, I don't know, maybe actually gain life from them or just have stuff on the board. It's a really good effect, and just you, in the end, you will have a lot of tokens. Yeah, next up is Primal Vigor, $6. This is a weird one. Potentially could backfire, but it is obviously much cheaper. It's five mana, and if any player would put plus one counters or create tokens, they double it. So hopefully you are making the most tokens at the player at the table. If you are, then it's going to be amazing for you. If something goes wrong and you get board wiped and somebody fires off a, I don't know, Scoot Swarm, uh-oh. And that, that will be rough. You have to play this one very carefully. But if you play it in the right meta, you can just take over the game as quickly as, like, 
pretty much possible, you're going to have a whole mob in the end, and they're going to have, what, like, maybe four treasures instead of two? Right, yeah, so the downside is real. You know, this could help opponents out very tangibly. But the upside is you save $24, you spend one more mana, and you, for you at least, get the exact same effect. So that's, I think, pretty noteworthy. But we're going to go to the next one. It's Asika's Chariot, $6. Three green, four, four, vehicle. ETB, you get two, two, two cats. And when it attacks, you can create a token that's a copy of target token you control. Now, this is what I was hinting at of copying important tokens that are, like, harder to make. I really like this. I remember when it was big in a certain 60-card format. But I think it's super cool because you're already making the tokens when it ETVs and it just creates copies of tokens. So if you do have another way to copy tokens, like how you have in Brutoclad or something like that, you could get some really interesting ones. I also just think that vehicles should have more time in the sun. Yeah, vehicles are sweet. You know, if you eternalize a timeless witness, you can make a copy of it with the Seeker's Chariot. I think the fact that it gives you two tokens up front and then the vehicle is sort of like this bonus thing that you get to keep totally helps these decks develop in the early game, and it sets you up for like, oh, okay, great. You know, I got a free attack on turn five. I'll just crew with my cats, make an extra cat. That's totally something you can do. And it's like, well, if I'm in the late game and I have a, a non-legendary token of my commander, I'm going to copy it, and then I get the ETB again. And it's like, that has the upside that Parallel Lives can also have. This just fuels itself, too, because you can have the 4-4 blocker because it comes with the 2-2-2 two, two, two cats. I think that's really interesting because there are some really awesome vehicles, like Shurikai, for instance. You can't crew that immediately, even though it comes down for the same amount of mana. Yeah, what's our last uh, token doubler thing? Our last one is Second Harvest at $9. You're you're just going to double the tokens that you already have on the board. Not great in an empty board, but if you already have a stacked board, you're just going to be just rolling in it, basically. Yeah, and this does have a little bit of upside over Parallel Lives. Parallel Lives, you have to play before you make tokens. But Second Harvest, you have to play after you make tokens. So it's a little bit of, like, give and take of when the cards are playable. Some token decks probably want both of these, but this can overwhelm people and step, boom, clone all my tokens. Even if I'm using the budget stuff, like Prairie Token, I clone all my foods. And it just kind of makes this gigantic board state, um, and it definitely pays you off for playing tokens. And it feels good to be paid off. Because I'm like, I want tokens, I want to double tokens. This is a budget way to do that. I think Magic players just love seeing the word double on cards too. It's just an explosion of permanence. The next card is Crater Hoof Behemoth at $30. Eight mana, but it gives an overrun effect to all of your creatures. And that's a lot of power in a short amount of time. Yeah, Crater Hoof Behemoth, well worth playing in your commander decks. It's like the easiest way to win games in green. It's probably one of the cards in the format that has won the most games by itself. 30 bucks, a bit much. We've got some pretty cost-efficient options here for you, though. We got N Race 4 runners at 80 cents, 8 mana, 7-7, seven, seven, and your creatures get not plus X plus X, plus 2 plus 2, and they gain Vigilance also, and they gain Trample. So it does turn a big army into this force, but you're not going to kill a table. You have to do some math. You'll probably kill one or two people. I play this in my budget Yarok deck, and it's super nice because I'm doubling that trigger, but if you can also just flicker it, you can just keep getting that plus two, plus two, and yeah. stacking the Vigilance. Totally. Uh, we also have Return of the Wild Speaker at 80 cents as well. It either gives your creatures plus three, plus three that are not humans, or draws equal to the biggest power of non-humans you control. So it's a little bit modal, and it's cheaper than Greater Hoof at five mana. Obviously, it's cheaper at 80 cents. But it's also an instant. So you can just attack with all your dudes. They won't know what's going on. They make the blocks, and then you blow them out, deal a bunch of damage to their face, and probably kill all their creatures in combat, too. This is awesome because if you have something against you like Delayed Blast Fireball, you can save it defensively, too, to give your team just a little bit of extra stat if you need it. That's true, because usually what you do is you go, all right, I'm, I have this five mana. I'm going to use it to draw cards. I'll hold it up until my turn. And if something like that did happen, you can go, whoop, save some of my dudes. Kamal is another great one at $3.50. Basically, it's an overrun type effect, but you can also pay mana into it to make your lands creatures. So if you don't have much of a board state going on, he like creates dudes out of thin air. He's like, come on, land. Come on, forest. Mountain, get over here. We're, we're attacking. Come on. Kamal is beefy, and he just brings a lot of power to your board in general. It's also repeatable. I think that this is a really good fissure, but if you can get him out a little bit early, too, you can just chip away at people, even if you just have a few creatures. Yeah, but we get to go to my personal favorite replacement for Crater Hoof, because it does a very similar thing of just create so much power that you might not have to do math. It's Overwhelming Stampede at $4. Your dudes get plus X, plus X, where X is the biggest single dude you have. If you have one 8-8, eight, eight, or you have, a cheat, you have a commander that gets reduced, like a Galta or something, there's plenty of those in green. This just becomes 
create 100 power, and then from that point, the game is over. You're killing at least two and a half people. Plus it's five mana, so it does come down earlier than Crater Hoof 2. Yeah, it's cheaper if you can play like other spells, or even just if you're in a late game, play a giant thing, don't have to attack with it, then play Overwhelming Stampede to get the extra boost. I think these cards do a pretty good job of accomplishing that, all right, it's late in the game, I need to send it home, I need Trample so that my creatures being 7 power or 5 power spill over and just finish people off. Most metas do end in combat damage and Trample's a great way to push that through, but we're going to move on to something a little bit more serious than cards. Every day, there are cats out there that aren't getting the education that they need to succeed in life. They are going without treats, scratchies, and belly rubs. Some of them don't even know how to play Magic the Gathering. But all hope is not lost. For as little as $2 a month, you can support Nitpicking Nerds on Patreon and get these cats the help that they need. Your small donation will change the lives of these helpless animals. Go to patreon.com slash nitpicking nerds to pledge your support. Thank you to all of our supporters. Wow, that was that was tough to watch. Truly moving stuff, I think. It really is. It breaks my heart every time. Yeah, I mean we're gonna have to go to our next card, but I'm gonna they're gonna be in my thoughts. Uh, we're gonna go to Archangel of Thune at $35. This is a life-linking flyer that when you gain life puts plus one plus one counters on all your creatures. This is a sick payoff. This card is super expensive because it's really cool. It's an angel, it's an old mythic that hasn't been reprinted in a while, and there's a lot of demand for it. But what it does is turns your life gain deck and your life gain triggers into a way to win the game, to grow your creatures. I like this because it doesn't say once per turn. It doesn't say only on your turn. You can just get it for as many triggers as you get. And that means just pumping your team up so high because that's what your deck is revolving around to do. People also like this card for combos because it can combo with some things. And if I'm thinking combo, let's talk about Heliod Suncrown. He's $14, so he's less than half the price. He's... Whenever you gain life, you put a plus one plus one counter on a creature or enchantment you control, and you can actually pay one in a white to give something lifelink. So this does have combos. You can throw it off a walking ballista or a Triskelion or something like that. But what it does is it gives you bigger creatures when you gain life. And this is actually really hard to interact with as an indestructible enchantment most of the time. And it can even throw some lifelink on if you need. This comes down quicker than Archangel too, so this could be a really good early gameplay and you could just start accruing advantage. Yeah, it won't grow your entire team like an overrun, but it will grow a single creature many, many times, especially with Soul Wardens or stuff, or you can spread out the counters and then, you know, it'll be a similar effect, but you have to wait a little longer, and I think that's okay. Next up, we got Caleric Class, $1.79. It says you gain extra life, then it levels up, and now when you gain life, you put counter on target creature, and the maximum level is you reanimate something and gain life equal to its uh, something. I think the classes are really slept on this, like Barbarian class, Wizard class, those are really good. They come down for really cheap, and leveling them up is at your discretion. So if you do have the mana, that's great, but if you don't and you want to play something else, it'll just be there and just statically giving you the effect. Yeah, this has a lot of what Archangel wants. It has that combo potential where you can still throw a spike feeder with this and you just gain infinite life. You can still do that, and it also has a little extra where it says now you gain more life, which is kind of similar to how the Angel has lifelink. And the last mode just gives you a full freaking card by reanimating your best thing gaining you more life. Plus, under $2? That's such a good deal. Yeah, I like this one a lot more than Heliod, even though Heliod does have extra other combos with it. What is our next card? Our next card is Nykthos Paragon at 70 cents. Whenever you gain life, you put that many 1-1 one -one counters on each creature you control, but only once per turn. I think that's a little bit limiting, but for 70 cents instead of $35, I I'm happy to take that in my budget decks. Yeah, we can throw down Nykthos Paragon. Maybe we, you know, when it enters, we gain life equal to its power or its toughness or something. And then when that happens giant overrun this could gain this could put more counters on creatures than archangel because archangel only ever puts one so if you even gain three life that's more than an archangel trigger that's like pretty sick you can attack and just totally kill people with that the only thing is it's once per turn however this does also work on opponent's turn so if nick those paragon stays in play even a soul warden will still trigger and put a counter on your dudes that is really good to consider or if you have instance and you have some sort of extort that can also be an option yeah next is kind of a weird one this is alenda's hierophant at two dollars and thirty cents it's a flyer whenever you gain life you put a counter on it and when it dies you get x11 vamps with lifelink where x is its power so we have that similar gain life 
put counters on. It does only put it on itself, but that actually kind of still equates to an overrun because when this dies, if it had 10 counters on it, you get 10 one ones with lifelink. God, I love Alinda so much. I play her in Edgar. She's super cool. And then people are just struggling like, oh, well, I can't do a board wipe now because then you'll have a board, set, but I don't have an exile spell in my hand. This is just an mono white version of that. <laughs> I think it's really cool. I think people should play this card more and you should try it out in your deck. Time to move on to a blue card. This is really expensive. It's a Sakashima of a thousand faces at $33 from Commander Legends. It feels like Commander Legends came out last week. It did not. <laughs> this is a clone with partner, but it clones only your own things. And it says the legend rule doesn't apply to your things. So the purpose this serves is to create extra legendaries that you really aren't supposed to have. And it can function in the command zone, but I don't really see that too much, especially since it's not like you're going to partner Sakashima with, oh, Moldrotha. It's like it can only partner with the, you know, mediocre one or two color commanders. You're not really trying to clone those. You're trying to clone other weird stuff, other legends in your deck. Yeah, if it's commander, it's usually with Clark to have that combo. But in the 99, I think that's where I see it most. You can get it as a secret layer right now. But if you want to get it from the commander legends, like I think they're both like, you know, bare minimum 30 bucks. So, yeah. so what are our replacements? One of our replacements is Autumn Soldier at $4. Four blue blue, you can have an ETB as a copy of a creature on the battlefield, except it's not legendary. And then it also has Myriad and it's an artifact. This is one of those Doctor Who cards that definitely slipped under the radar for all of us, including BZ and I. Right, so this not only does what Sakashima wants in that you're creating an extra t uh, copy of a legendary creature, it just loses the legendary part. You get the extra text box of your favorite legend, but it does the extra work for you of saying, no, 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 here's more of them. If you give this haste or you just untap with it and attack with it, now you've got three of that text box probably four because you also cloned something. And that's just like exactly where this deck wants to be. That's exactly what Sakashima players would want. Myriad is super cool too. So I do like the fact that if you attack it and you can do something with your commander at instant speed, you can just get so much value in that combat step. Yeah, what's next? Next is Quantum Misalignment, another Doctor Who card at $4.50. For a blue, you create a token that's a copy of a target creature you control, except it's not legendary, but it has rebound so that you can get two copies of a legendary creature that you have. So in theory, you could have three commanders. Yes, so this card I like at the rate that it is because it's five mana for two copies over two turns. And it seems like this would have a downside over Sakashima because it says create a token that's a copy of target. So by killing the creature you want to clone in response, it fizzles it. But a little secret about Sakashima of a Thousand Faces, if somebody puts Sakashima of a Thousand Faces on the stack and they have a board state that I can visually see, I know what they're going to clone and I can kill it in response to nullify both of them. And then they're going to go, well, I guess I have a sad robot. It's like basically Sakashima also telegraphs what it wants to clone. So you can still kill it in response. So I don't think you lose out on much with quantum misalignment. Unless you actually just have one creature and then... Maybe you should, you know. Maybe play, don't do that. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe maybe play something else. <laughs> Next is Spark Double at five dollars and fifty cents, and BZ has a grudge with this card. It's four mana. You create a copy of a creature you control, but it gets a plus one plus one counter on it, and it's not legendary. To me, it's basically the same thing as Sakashima. It doesn't give you the legend rule clause, but it doesn't matter because Spark Double is not legendary. So if you clone Spark Double, that's also not legendary, and you can just keep going from there. Uh, this is the same kind of clunky where it can only clone your things, and you know it's pretty telegraphed. But this is like about as close of an effect as you can get. If you were thinking about Sakashima and you don't care that it's legendary itself, forget it. Play Spark Double. The $5.50 price tag is way better. But I do have a grudge and that I do think this card is like massively overplayed. <laughs> do you want to explain it? Not really. Let's go to Mirrorbox. $2.30. This is your way to have the legend rule not apply. It doesn't do the cloning thing, but it certainly does the legend rule thing. So then from there, you can spam the same creature if you want. And then they even get bigger. Yeah, you do get a little bit of the buff, but pe that's not why people are playing this. Plus, it's only three mana to come down. That's really not bad, and you can get it down pretty quickly. All right, time to move on to the next expensive staple. We're going to crack this one wide open. It's Old Gnawbone at $35. 7-7 Flampler. Whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, you get that many treasures. So you play Old Gnawbone, attack. If you deal 14 damage right away with creatures, you get 14 treasures. You can spend it. You can save it. You know, really all the things you can do with regular money. It doesn't... <laughs> It doesn't matter that old Gnawbone hits or doesn't hit or attacks or doesn't attack because it counts for all of your creatures. So if you have a, a lot of tramplers on the board already or you just have like a mess of creatures that are like one ones and you can get through with a bunch of them, you're still getting the, that many treasures when it comes down. And honestly, these replacements, 
are so good and so close to old Gnawbone that I legitimately am not going to buy any more old Gnawbones because I can just use this. The first one, Sakiko, Mother of Summer, 50 cents. Whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, add that much green mana until end of turn, you don't lose this mana as steps and phases end. This is about as close as you could possibly get. All you have to do is use the mana right away, which I don't think green decks have too much of a problem with, and it's literally the same card, except it's cheaper to cast. Obviously, you don't want to be playing this if you're in like a 3, 4, or 5 color deck if you can't utilize that specifically green mana. But in mono green decks, this is going to be awesome. You can throw down three haymakers in a single turn. Yeah, if you even see like an old Gnawbone commander deck that you were thinking about building, just swap this out and all of a sudden it's a budget proof. The next one is Nature's Will at $1. Whenever one or more creatures you control deal combat damage to the player, tap all lands they control and untap all lands you control. So it's like a little bit of a double duty type of deal. This card does a lot of weird things. First of all, let's just say I play Nature's Will. You know, the turn I would have played all Gnawbone, I play this instead, and I attack with one or two things. Great. I untap all my lands. That's, you know, let's assume it's like seven or eight. I get that same boost of mana, and I can save it to cast an instant on your turn, or I can just re redevelop and retap it to develop my board. But what's interesting about Nature's Will is that it's one or more creatures dealing combat damage to a player, so you can hit all three opponents untap your lands three times, but you just have to float that mana and then cast like a big instant. Plus, if they're the type of deck that's like draw a pass, that can really screw them up later in the game if they were saving that mana for something important. That's true. You even get the bonus of tapping their lands. So Nature's Will is a pretty sweet one. We also have Mark of Sakiko. You remember her. $2 for an aura. The enchanted creature has, whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, add that much green until end of turn. You don't lose this mana as steps and phases end. So you're going to play your big flampler, or play something like that, some dragon. Then the next turn, play this on it, attack with it, and get a bunch of mana right away. This, unlike Old Gnawbone, seems way easier to make your mana back on because it's only two. You do have to be careful which creature you target, but in the end, I think that this is a really good option because I do like the enchant creature, like enchantments a lot. I think they're really cool. Which brings us to the next one, Bear Umbra, $4. You enchant a creature, it gets plus two, plus two, and when it attacks, untap all lands you control, it's totem armor too. Yeah, the bonus of this card is that it doesn't have to deal combat damage. Who cares? And you're not even risking the creature when you send it in, at least the first time, because if it dies, you just lose Bear Umbra, which you probably want to keep, but still, you get to untap all your lands right away. This is a very often extremely mana positive and can kind of act like Old Gnawbone in basically taking an extra turn. The extra stats, too. I think that 2-2, two, two, especially if you can chip in like a few turns in advance, you're getting those extra lands, but that damage does add up over the long run. Yeah, I think these cards... Kind of put an old Gnawbone to shame, honestly, considering the budget difference. Uh, get out of here, old Gnawbone. Who even needs you? Old Gnawbone is five times more expensive than the total of all of these cards put together. So that's a really good deal, all of these budget alternatives. But next is Enlightened Tutor at $22. One white mana for an instant. You search your library for an artifact or enchantment. You find it and you put it to the top of your library. So this is at instant speed. It's You could do it turn one but it is expensive at $22. Right, this is a very powerful tutor effect, and the effect that we're going to look at primarily for this one is finding an enchantment and putting it either in your hand or on top, basically putting it in your hand. It's uh, Putting it on top at instant speed is very close. So we're trying to get access to our best cards that are artifacts or enchantments, and we're trying to do it for a reasonable uh, price. So the first replacement we have is Invasion of Theros, a card I forgot existed. 60 cents, two and a white, ETB, search your library for an aura, god, or demigod, put it into your hand, then shovel, and it becomes a weird god, and it says you draw cards when other enchantments enter under your control. But basically, you have to find an aura. So this is not quite any enchantment, but I think there's a lot of enchantments in the Enchantress decks, which is, of course, where you would want this, that are auras like you can find Wild Growth to ramp, you can find Kenra's Transformation or Song of the Dryads for removal. There's plenty of different options. You can find Bear Umbra, you know, untap all your lands. So I think Invasion of Theros does a pretty good Enlightened Tutor impression, although it only gets better from here. Plus, if you have a Voltron deck like BZ's Imperial Archangel deck, it can really, you might have way more options than you'd think. The next alternative to Enlightened Tutor is Moonbless Cleric at $1. Tuna White, when it ETBs, you can search your library for an enchantment card, reveal it, and then shuffle and put it on top. We're getting that effect for a couple more mana, but you also get a body out of it. So if you can flicker it, you can get that effect multiple times. I don't think it gets closer to a replacement for Enlightened Tutor than this one. Again, it does not find artifacts. White can't really do that. That's sort of a color pie break on Enlightened Tutor's part. So the part we can replicate is pay two more mana, but you get a creature 
and it just enlightened tutors when it enters. So you can flicker this or reanimate it to get it again. That's really cool. The only thing to note is don't get too trigger happy with flickering this because playing it and flickering it immediately doesn't actually do anything. You only get the top card. So <laughs> it doesn't go into your hand. Just know that. But that's a really good replacement. Honestly, I would be so fine with just swapping any enlightened tutors I would buy with this thing instead. Especially if your games go a little bit longer mm -hmm. than just like needing that card, you know, turn two drawing into it. Next is Idyllic Tutor at $7. It's like Enlightened Tutor, but it actually goes straight to your hand. So it's a little bit better, but yes. you do have to wait a little bit longer. And again, it only finds enchantments. This is really directly to your hand though. So it it's like, oh, I have to spend more expensive and I can't do an instant speed, but you get it right now. So if it's important and you need to remove something or cast something or trigger something, you can do it right away. With Enlightened Tutor, it's like, okay, I got to find a way to, to draw a card. So while it is slower and like clunkier, it's also better for you after it resolves. You feel better about it. You can't have it milled away or anything. Yeah, there's no there's no funny business. But we do have one, and I do mean one, budget alternative for Enlightened Tutor if you want to find artifacts. As far as I know, this is like the only other white card that even searches for artifacts. It's Oswald Fiddlebender at $1.79. You can pay white and tap him and sacrifice an artifact to birthing pod another artifact. So you search for an artifact that costs one plus that sacrifice things mana value, put it on the battlefield, then shuffle... It's a little different, but it is search for artifact, put artifact out. So if you've got the like prerequisite one mana value less thing to sacrifice, you get to go find your best artifact and put it into play. It's a little finicky, you know, it's, it's Oswald Fiddlebender. He's just a weird little guy, but it's pretty much the only way to get tutor artifacts in white. I don't dislike that though, because you could trade like treasures are food for like soul ring. And that's just a really good deal overall. Yeah, you can find like, you know, skull clamp off of a token and then start drawing cards with it. I love Oswald. He's good. He's just not exactly enlightened tutor. But if you're looking for more budget replacements for those ridiculously expensive commander staples that we're sick of buying, you can check that out right here.